I picture him gazing at the beauty of his kingdom, soaking in all of its majesty and splendor for one last time. Slowly arising, he takes off his crown and places it at the feet of his father. All the angels are silently gathered with their eyes fixed on him. Everything has stopped, for this is the moment that has been talked about by believers for centuries. He begins to walk down the streets of gold towards the pearly gates, fully knowing what awaits him on the other side. Yet he does not complain or hesitate, but rather walks with a purpose that can only come from a place of unconditional love. As he steps outside the gates, he turns around for one last glance at the perfection that he is leaving behind. With his father and all the angels in his kingdom, he says, the time has fully come. And in that moment, Jesus came to earth to die. Jesus left the perfection of heaven to take on the form of a human. Not because he had to, but because he wanted to. He was showing the world that God still loves us despite all of our transgressions and shortcomings. After 400 years of silence, a brightly lit star began to shine over the city of Bethlehem. And when the baby's first cry echoed in the manger, our story of salvation began. 33 years later, Christ was crucified for you, for me. Jesus died. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and and invisible. Whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead. Christ suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring us back to God. And God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on a cross.